Your job sucks and you need out. Now, you wake up in the morning and dread the idea of having to deal with another day of the same garbage. Your workplace is toxic, your coworkers suck, and your manager has his head in the clouds. And of course, the pay is terrible. You need a new job, but you can't quit because you need the money. And so you're handcuffed to work where you're wasting away. You haven't interviewed in years. What do they even ask nowadays? You're barely finishing all of your tasks at work. There's just no time to brush up on your skills. It doesn't have to be this way. In this video, I'll go over what I would do if I was trying to prepare for the interview while holding a full-time job. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Steve Huynh, and I'm an L7 principal software engineer at Amazon. I make videos that I wish existed when I was coming up in the industry. If you'd like more of this type of content, sign up for my weekly newsletter or join my Discord if you wanna chat with a growing community of ambitious technology professionals. Before I get to my first point, I'd like to talk about the fundamental problem with your situation. Preparing for interviews while you have a job is a full-time job on its own. The only thing worse than your job right now is adding a bunch of work on top of it. There's just so much to prepare for. For coding problems, there's just so many questions. There's the blind 75, the grind 75, the knee code 150. Lee code has thousands of problems now. If you're a senior plus and need to prepare for system design, now you've got textbooks of content you need to internalize. And on top of all of this, you need to prepare for soft questions as well. How the heck do you know when you're ready? Like ready, ready? Well, I'll tell you how not to do it. I have a two year old and she just discovered that she can write on the walls in permanent marker in every room of the house. Now, luckily she didn't get all of the walls and she's pretty short, so she didn't get the tall places, but we need to repaint. And so we're gonna paint over where she made the marks. I could remove all of the furniture in the house and paint over everything, but that would take forever, cost a lot more money and supplies, and more importantly, be a bunch of hassle and take a ton of time, the very resource that I don't have a lot of. And so we're going to spot paint over the marks and maybe paint like one wall that needs to be spruced up anyways. And that's my first point. You need to spend your time on identifying and targeting the areas where you need the most help. And you need to be intentional about the things that you won't be preparing for, just as much as the things that you need to prepare for. It would be a gigantic mistake to prepare for interviews by repainting your entire house. Do not open up your copy of Designing Data Intensive Applications and read it cover to cover. Do not prepare with LeetCode questions by starting from the first one and solving the questions in numerical order. It may feel like being thorough would be a good thing, right? If you reviewed it all, then you're guaranteed coverage. The problem with being thorough with preparation though, is that you're battling two things that can turn into rat holes, breadth and depth. When it comes to breadth, where do you stop? Should you learn machine learning and AI? Should you pick up Rust or the newest JavaScript framework? Maybe you should learn some embedded system stuff. It's unbounded and you can go off the deep end. When it comes to depth, it's the same thing. Where do you stop? The first link for the wiki page for Dijkstra's algorithm leads to the wiki for algorithm, which leads to mathematics, which leads to the wiki on knowledge, which leads to declarative knowledge, which leads to awareness, which links to philosophy, which goes to ancient Greek, and then the wiki for Greek language. Also, you might get stuck in a loop if you're not careful, like if you went to the wiki page for a recursion. So how do we avoid painting the entire house and to target the things that we absolutely need to work on? One way is with today's video sponsor, Formation. Formation is the world's first AI-powered technical interview prep program for experienced software engineers in the US or Canada looking to level up their software engineering careers. Formation has just launched a free technical interview readiness assessment that software engineers can take to uncover their exact technical skills, weaknesses, and the specific companies they're ready to interview at. Now, I'm not looking for a job right now, quite the opposite. I just quit my job and retired from software development, but I decided to take the test anyways to see what I should be working on if I were to prepare for interviews. All right, looks like I got a score of 771. I'm likely ready for data structures and algorithms questions asked by the following companies. My breakdown is, I guess I'm a beginner in arrays, advanced in linked list, intermediate with recursion. I can probably improve in dynamic programming. That's not a surprise to me. It looks like they've put together a plan for me for what would happen if I signed up for formations program, mock interviews, daily standup concept drills for pair programming, 
So it seems like it's putting together a pretty good, decent plan. The reason I accepted Formation as a sponsor is because they take a high touch and personalized approach to preparing for interviews. Based on the assessments, they'll come up with an intensive plan tailored to you and humans will work directly with you until you get your next gig. Alumni from their programs in 2023 increased their salary on average $82,000 a year. So. If you're looking for a new job and want to maximize your chances of landing that next level gig, head on over to Formation by clicking on the link in the description to take their free online assessment. Thanks again to Formation for sponsoring today's video. So let's say you've done the work of identifying what you need to work on. And it turns out, dang, there's a lot. And even though we've limited the things that we need to cover, that list is still going to take our precious time. Not just raw time, but focus time that's gonna tire you out. And this is all while work is really grinding you. So what to do? How to make the most of your waking hours? When I get home from the office, I have to put in a shift of childcare for my two kids. I don't mind doing it most days, I have to do my part. But what I found is that I started to run out of time for one of my passions, reading. Then it dawned on me that I could listen to audiobooks. You know how sometimes you think you're really smart, but then a really obvious thing takes forever to think of? That was me with audiobooks. When all I'm doing is bouncing a bouncer or while I have to console a crying baby in the middle of the night, I'm usually good for one to two hours of listening to books. Now, you can say that audiobooks aren't really reading, they are, at least to me, but it's been a game changer in terms of feeding my appetite for books. And that's my next point about preparing for interviews. You wanna see if there's an intersection between what you do for work and preparing. Anytime that you can kill two birds with one stone, you wanna leverage those opportunities. For example, right now, it's the beginning of the year, a common time for performance reviews. And as part of performance reviews, you wanna highlight your achievements from the past year. Well, when you're interviewing, you wanna come up with good examples of your experience for the behavioral and soft questions. Describing your good work during performance review season will help you when updating your resume and preparing for interviews. You may be needing to brush up on concurrency for interviews, and the system that you work on may also lean heavily on concurrency. Researching and learning more about concurrency at a deep level can benefit both your work and your interview prep. And you can push this as far as you're comfortable. Grinding lead code questions at work hours is a gray area that not everybody is okay with, but maybe you volunteer to do some interviewing for your team, so the lead coding is about research, right? The point is, I think that if you spend a bit of time thinking about it, your work activities and your interview prep do intersect in places. And if they do, it represents a high leverage activity that you should lean into. You want to peak at the right time, which is the day of the interview for your top tier companies. If you peak too early, you may not be able to line up the interviews in time. If you peak too late, you won't be able to showcase your best. So how do you do it? Well, there's a technique that I learned at my time at Amazon that's dead simple when you say it out loud, but you would be surprised how many people don't employ it and actually just do the exact opposite. Another group of people that want to peak at the right time are fighters. If you're a fighter, you wanna peak the day of the big fight. So that means that you need to make weight the day before. So you might know that you need to essentially starve yourself in the days leading up to the weigh-in. To minimize the chance of injury, your peak intensity training should taper that week while you're cutting weight, which means that the peak intensity training should occur a couple weeks before the taper starts, which means that you need to start conditioning and a nutrition regimen months before peak intensity training to ramp up. You get the idea. Compare that to a fighter that has a match in the upcoming months, and his plan is to simply work on his biggest weakness. And so he works on his footwork to get it up to his standard. After that, he works really hard on endurance. But then, because he's neglected other skills, his speed has taken a hit. And now the weigh-in is coming and the fight is rapidly approaching. The only things that he can do now are drastic and the equivalent of cramming for the interview. And that's my point. The first fighter employed the technique of working backwards from the date of the big fight, otherwise known as right to left planning. The second fighter employed left to right planning by working on the most important things first. The big problem with left to right planning is that there's no regulator to make sure that the preparation is time bound in a way that will have all of the things that you have to prepare for completed simultaneously. Working backwards from the date is a very common Amazon practice and something that I highly recommend that you lean into. Get a physical calendar out and circle the date where you want to schedule all of your interviews. That's the date that you want to peak and start working your way back to today's date. I think that the best way to know whether you're ready to interview is by actually doing interviews. So what you might want to do is attempt to schedule some tier two company interviews before the main event. So maybe you want to schedule mock interviews some weeks before that, which means that you need to be in interview shape before the mock interview so you aren't wasting time and money. You get the idea. You might be saying to yourself, 
Duh, Steve. Of course you should be working backwards from a date. Look at Mr. Amazon man over here talking about this mind blowing concept of right to left planning like he invented the transistor. Look, I wouldn't even bring it up if I didn't notice people I know doing the complete opposite. I can't tell you the amount of people I know that say, yeah. I'm gonna start preparing for interviews by firing up Lee code and staying stuck on the same dynamic programming question for two weeks. When the interview comes, they go straight into cramming mode and the net effect is that they don't show their best stuff. And that's a big shame. The reason I know people don't work backwards from the get go is that planning takes a lot of time and energy. And so the default is to just start working on things that they know that they have to work on. But that's not the smart way to do it. I think it makes a ton of sense to spend a minimum of 5% and optimally 10% of your allotted time to prepare for interviews to dedicate towards planning. Suppose you plan to give yourself three months to prepare for interviews. That's about 90 days, give or take. Spending about five days figuring out what you need to focus your attention on, breaking up your preparation into bite-sized chunks, setting effective milestones, and looking ahead for scheduling conflicts and things that might upend your preparation seems about right to me for preparing for a high quality plan. If you had me bet on which person I think would do the best with their interviews, someone that employed right to left planning and stayed organized versus someone that just worked on their biggest weaknesses, I would bet on that first person. The technical part of the interview is important, but you shouldn't sleep on the behavioral interview. It could be the reason you get downleveled and lose out on hundreds of thousands of dollars. Learn all about it with my video on how to tell a good story, where I break down exactly how to do it. If you're having problems finding a job right now, take a look on my video on what I would do if I was looking for a job.